With the 45th pick in the 2021 NBA Draft, the Boston Celtics have gone overseas to make their selection. Juan Beguerin, the pick here in round two, he's from France, specifically more so Paris, although there's some hometown stuff in there as well. The Celtics' first pick of the night is a very intriguing one. I, I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Juan Beguerin. I've seen some Juan Beguerin, and I was basing everything on some French pronunciations, which is tough because it's not quite how I'm going to be able to say it. I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing the name right. If I'm not, I'm, I'm terribly sorry, and I, and I apologize for that one. But you guys care about the pick itself here. Juan Beguerin is a very tantalizing prospect in this year's NFL or NBA draft, excuse me. The type of player that you gamble on. He's only 18 years old, doesn't turn 19 until August 7th, and did play a decent amount last year in France. He averaged 11.7 points per game, 3.5 rebounds, a couple of assists as well. Decent not great turnover numbers there. There's a lot of upside here with Juan Beguerin. I think the number one thing that's most intriguing about the Celtics pick of Beguerin is what he could end up offering on the defensive side of the ball. He's a very good athlete. He is explosive and has tantalizing size. 6'6", 215, with a 7-foot wingspan and an 8-foot, 9-inch standing Reach. He's very long and frankly strong at 215 for a teenager who, you know, can't drink in America for a couple more years now. There's a lot of rawness that we'll get into here to develop with Juan Beguerin, but for a round two pick, all the way down to number 45 overall before the NBA draft wraps up, this is the type of low risk, high reward upside gamble that a team like Boston should be making. You might even see Beguerin stay overseas as a draft and stash guy for a little bit, although that's very much up in the air as we sit right this second. Now, this was the Celtics' round two pick because they did not have a first round pick as part of the previous Kemba Walker Al Horford trade. Reminder on that one, and we'll go more in depth in it later on. Horford goes to Boston with Moses Brown and a second round pick in next year's NBA draft. The Thunder then got Kemba Walker and a first round pick this year, number 16 overall plus a future second. That pick, by the way, became Alperin Shingoon, the big man who goes to the Thunder. So a lot of moving pieces there for the Celtics, but they make their pick here in round two and they add a French guard, a wingman, if you will, and Juan Beguerin, who could end up being a Nice little piece if they can develop and hit on him. So grade the Celtics draft for me, folks. Obviously a, you know, light draft with just the one pick, but hey, maybe you want to grade on a curve. It's all good. Get your votes in for me. A, B, C, D, or F. Get your votes in right now. Let's spend some more time now talking about Juan Beguerin. I want to focus on the positive stuff here first. I mentioned the size, the, the, the wingspan, the defensive prowess he might be able to provide. He did average about 1.4, or did average 1.4 steals per game. The potential upside defensively is very, very intriguing. He's got the explosiveness. He's got the above-the-rim ability that you're certainly searching for. If he can develop and click as a, as a kind of almost a combo guard, maybe in a little bit in the mold of a, maybe Marcus Smart's too high, maybe an Amon Shumpert type of player ends up making more sense for where Boston got him here at number 45 overall. There's a lot of intrigue here as a defensive player. Bouncy is maybe a good way to describe. It kind of almost plays like a running back at points. He's, he's so big and strong and willing to just attack downhill when he plays under control from that perspective. Now, the concern here, and, and you know, actually I do want to mention one more thing. The shooting is okay. It's not elite. He made 34% of his catch and, th and, and shoot three-point attempts. Not bad. That's intriguing. But overall, he, this is a raw player through and through. There's a lot of development left to be done for Juan Baguera, and there's Polish is not his game. S streaky might not even do it justice from a shooting perspective. 45.9% from the field. 36.4 from three is intriguing. The 64.1 from the free throw line is profoundly concerning. 
And while he does have the above the ability you're searching for in a potential slasher and driver at the guard position, he did not do enough uh, in terms of, of finishing consistently. He made just 50% of his shots at the rim on you know non-post-up type of moves, which, shout out to the Athletic for this staff, stat 86th out of 96 in the French second division with 50 such attempts. His, his free throw form is not particularly good. And although he's an aggressive passer, which I like, there's too many turnovers. 2.3 points or, or turnovers per game is a little bit high in a 33-game sample size this year over in Paris. He needs to develop as a passer. What you're betting on here if you're Boston are the physical tools, not so much the skills. He has upside as, as a not so much a 3 and D player, I'd say more of a, of a drive and D player, being able to slash and attack and play good defense. The tools are ridiculous. This is definitely a player worth betting on in the mid to late part of the second round, but he is certainly not there yet. This might be a guy who's maybe a year or two, hopefully not two years away from being two years away, the real ones know, but he's going to take some time to develop as a NBA player, which I think Boston with their roster overall is kind of in position to deal with from that perspective. Now, Boston fans, if you guys want even more videos here around free agency, trades, and everything, hit that big red button and subscribe. The NBA offseason, by far, is the best offseason in all of sports. And we here at Chat Sports are excited to do more Boston Celtics videos. But we're a meritocracy. Guys got to subscribe. If you subscribe, more videos for you. It's that simple. The more subscribers, the more videos we can do for you guys. Hit that big red button right now. I did want to hit this again kind of briefly and then also mention where Boston's at right now. No first-round pick makes it tough on them from a draft grade perspective. Honestly, I think if we're not grading on a curve with no first-round pick, a C kind of feels about right. But, hey, maybe Al Horford ends up carving out a role for this Boston team as a key player. I I'm going to list him as a starter right now for Boston. I mean, I look at what they have on their roster. It's mostly set. I think they need another shot creator in the backcourt. That's not going to be Juan Bagarin right now. That's maybe a key Evan Fournier and try and add somebody else via trade or free agency. But adding a guard made a lot of sense in round two. Maybe look for a depth piece. But Boston is kind of in this awkward position where they're just going to bank on Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum heavily. So before we go, let me know what you guys think. Are you happy with the Boston Celtics pick? Type in Y for yes you are or type in N for no, you're not.